Okay, I am back. Y'all know I just be chitter chattering all the time. Okay, we are talking about secret enemies and what we can do to protect our spaces and protect ourselves from having these secret enemies, um, their energies that are coming towards us, how we ward it off, okay? So, in the last one, we discussed um, doing a 12D shield or protection roses around your aura, you know, whatever you want to do, do the roses around your aura, your auric field, okay? So you can imagine three feet around you, in front of you, behind you, above you, beneath you, all over, you know, like like in a bubble, okay? So that could be your auric field, you envision where it is, and you could put protection roses all around your auric field, or you could put one protection rose out in front of your auric field. If you feel like you are under attack, when I feel like that, I, w I used to do a hedge of protection. You know, I would do a hedge of roses all around me, okay? And I would be protecting myself. And you command what these roses are going to do, whether you have one protection rose or a group, okay? And the rose is going to protect your space from discordant energies. It's going to protect your space from people's energy entering your space because your space is supposed to be yours, okay? Not filled with a whole bunch of other people's crap. When your space is filled with a bunch of people's crap that's when you're confused you don't know what to do um you're feeling chaotic you're you're not manifesting anything because you got too much people's crap in your space you're hearing everybody else's voice and you don't know yours you can't hear from your higher selves you can't hear from your collective team you know all right so that's what you're gonna do you're gonna protect yourself that's one way of protecting yourself you can do a 12d shield Okay, with this 12D shield, I know I do it. I probably have it on my channel on YouTube where I've walked the, the group um, in the Goddess Isis Coven through a 12D shield. We do 12D shields all the time. Mine are different sometimes because I do a little healing in the middle of the 12D shield. Okay, so I know last week when we did the um, deprogramming and reprogramming, I started with a 12D shield combined with healing okay so the, and that's posted but that's in our group okay because that's not out on the internet but anyway you could do a 12d shield there are basic 12d shields out there you just put in 12d shield you will find one okay um lisa renee i think did one <sighs> okay i'm trying to talk real fast okay so you can do a 12D shield and, and program your shield as you are building that shield. And as that shield is coming up, you are telling that shield what to do. Okay? So you protect your space from discordant energies. You protect your space from energies entering. Okay? I want to protect my space. Shield off, ward off any entities, any energies that are not serving my highest good. If there are any secret enemies out there doing works against me whether they are doing it on purpose or not just release it repel it you can return to sender i usually return to sender you sending me stuff here you go right back to you okay return it to sender all right because they need to work on their own shit and if they, if they don't feel the karma of what they have done they will never work on themselves sometimes the most negative people don't nobody ever tells them that they freaking negative as fucks right Nobody ever tells them about themselves because they don't want to be on the receiving end of that wrath that they give off the people, all that negative funk, you know? So don't nobody ever tell them so they don't ever work on themselves. So you send that shit back to them. Well, I bet you they start working on their own stuff in a minute, you know what I mean? If they start to feel the funk that they want to give out, let them feel the karmic retribution of what they are giving out. And it's no shade, and it's not bad to do that, okay? And I'll tell you why in a minute. Because I used to be a damn doormat for everybody's energy. I never sent anything back. And then one of my spiritual teachers, she said, girl, if you don't stop, you better send that shit back, you know, because, you know, you, you're messing up. They told me you are messing up karmic balance by receiving and absorbing everybody's shit. You know, you're messing up karmic balance, okay? And you're preventing that person from learning their lessons. You know, they never get to work on their shadow stuff because nobody ever tells them they need to, okay? So anyway, let's get back to what to do. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, another thing you can do is a um, a reversible candle. Um, and what I got from Source Creator this morning is that during this period, even though we've missed a week of it, from May 15th to June 14th, you should be doing a reversible candle if you like. You can also do a protection candle. You could do a white candle for protection. You could do a reversible candle um, to just reverse the energies, send the energies back. If you don't feel comfortable sending back people, whatever they send you, you send it back, you could ask that the energies be neutralized and sent back to them. That's what I always used to do until I was checked by my spiritual team to stop doing that. Okay? So however you want to send it back, you send it back, right? But you definitely send it back. So um, Source Creator communicated with me this morning and I was told that I said, well, how many candles will we need for this? And I heard three. If you get those five-day candles, they call them seven-day candles, but they're really five-day. Um, if you get the five-day candles, the reversible candles, those would work. Um, and just keep it lit until uh, June the 14th. So you're going to keep one lit. You could also keep a protection candle lit, but you really, if you're doing your daily work if you're doing your daily shielding if you're doing your daily protection roses or whatever you use to protect your space you probably don't need a protection candle but if you want to go ahead right but definitely i was told the reversible candle if you want you don't have to do that you know what i mean you could just program your shield to do everything for you now what else did she say she said reversible candle that was it all right and just know that you might you know, you might notice some things that's a little special that comes into your space, you know, right now. Like, for example, one one person, um, uh, um, one of her friends was slighting her. And, and it's been a couple of slights. And so I said, well, that person more than likely is your secret enemy. I said, if I knew astrology, I'd do your chart. <laughs> And I bet you that person is going to show up in your uh, 12th house and that person's going to be your secret enemy because the things that the person was doing was very secret enemy-ish, okay? And the person likes the person, you know, oh, are you okay after I punch in your nose? You know, are you okay? Okay, so that was one person. Then there was another person and um, the other person's situation was... And it, it's it's kind of deep, and I'm not going to get into a lot of details because it's an ongoing situation. But somebody who is, has clearly been identified as a secret enemy called, and this was yesterday, the person called and was like, hey, are you all right? You know, I care and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is the same person that was doing shit against you. And that's probably behind all of this in the first place, but whatever, you know, but once you're aware and in tune with things, you really know. Um, I had a situation where a person was telling me something that was negative that I didn't ask for. You know, sometimes people give you their opinion and you didn't ask for it like I do. But if you're on my channel listening to my opinion, you're asking for it. <laughs> Because that's all I do is give you my opinion. But with other people, you know, I, I like to ask opinions because I don't ask much. So if I don't ask you your opinion, don't give it to me because I didn't ask. You know, I, I am very confident in my connection with Source Creator and my connection with my team. You know, my ancestors have been guiding me all my life. So if I don't ask your opinion, you need to ask me if I want your opinion, for real, for real. And especially if you're giving me somebody else's opinion, I don't give a f what they think or what they talking about, what the hell? Because what happens when somebody gives you their opinion and it's negative, it's really a challenge to get that shit out your head, okay? And especially if it's something that you're already working on, and maybe you're trying to ward off the doubts. And then somebody come give you some bullshit. It's like, what? Get the fuck out of here. And then you got to be doing all this work to release their damn words from your head. So anyway, I'm going to end that with that. And I hope you all got something from this. So beware of those secret enemies that are rampant right now. And I'll talk to y'all in the next one.